because Congress made it easier to close one of those buckets. We still have the other two. Let's get to our calls. What to do with the Guantanamo detainees? Paulo is in Rome, New York, on the Democrats' line. Good morning. Thank you. Um, you know, we talk a lot about blind justice in this country as an ideal, but it's not a reality. Uh, for example, there's overwhelming scientific evidence proving that the Twin Towers and Building 7 were brought down in a controlled demolition on 9-11, yet prosecutors and government legislatures won't... Paolo, Paolo, the- we're going to let you go there. That's not the topic of this conversation. Let's go to David in about this. We'll go to Jesse first in Virginia Beach, Virginia, on our line for Republicans. Jesse, good morning. You're on with Senator Coburn. Uh, hello, Senator. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I have a question about on 9-11, the Building 7 wasn't hit by an airplane but fell straight down symmetrically in six and a half seconds. Random fires couldn't have done that. Only a pre-planted explosive could have. Uh, would you be willing to meet with and review the evidence well, Building 7 controlled demolition with representatives. Of- well, Jesse, we'll, we'll try to stick <clears throat> to uh, the waste book question, but, Senator, I'll give you a, a chance to answer Jesse's question. We'll look at that. I'm not going to spend a lot of time meeting with people. If somebody has something that is definitive, uh, we'll certainly look at it. Let's go to Julie now. It's a debate we never had. It's really amazing. I mean, you think about how much time we end up debating in Washington this weapons program, this education program, the, the amounts are tiny compared to what we spend in the response to 9-11. Our guest is David Sanger. The book is Confront and Conceal, now in paperback. He covers the national security issues for The New York Times. Scott is joining us from Peekskill, New York. Good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you? Fine, thank you. Well, I'm glad to hear that your uh, your sensitivities on 9/11. My father was actually in World Trade Center two when the uh, second plane hit, and uh, it's it's uh, it's very uh, it's very difficult moment for our family um, to 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 deal with uh, every anniversary. Did he survive but, the attack, Scott? He did. He did, but he he's been very traumatized by it. Um, you know, his company you know, virtually ceased to exist as of that day. And, you know, being a senior uh, member of that company, it was very difficult for him to deal with all the changes, you know, because you've been going to the same place to work your entire life, and then all of a sudden the building doesn't even exist anymore. And, you know, such a traumatic, he was running through the smoke with his briefcase, and the fireman found his wallet like six months later and returned it to him. And, I mean, it was just such a, a you know, we couldn't find him all day. It was it was a very traumatic event. And I'm glad to hear that you gentlemen share so many sensitivities uh, to the matter. My question um, is uh, to your guest. Uh, you know, across the street from the New York Times building, there's a billboard asking you where your paper's coverage is of the over 2,000 architects and engineers who are demanding a new investigation of Building 7's destruction on 9-11, and the overwhelming evidence that pre-planted explosives destroyed it. Um, since this has everything to do with our national security, can you explain what rational and scientific basis your paper has for failing to fail to fairly and objectively cover this crucial issue? Uh, Scott, thanks very much for your question. I grew up near Peekskill and uh, grew up around New York, and uh, so uh, trust me, the people who work at the New York Times have uh, as much of a critical interest in what happened on 9-11 as anybody else, because not only are they reporters there, but uh, they live and work uh, within the city. And we've devoted a fairly considerable amount of repertorial time over the past number of years to the question of uh, all of the different theories, conspiracy theories, regular theories, non-conspiracy theories about what happened uh, on that day. And uh, you've heard the huge uh, variety of them. We have not yet found any convincing evidence to suggest that there was a plot. There was a plot that the president knew about in advance, which was one of the issues that came up. I was with the president on 9-11 at the school uh, in Florida. I can tell you that uh, he looked pretty shocked by what had happened and and shell-shocked by what had happened. And we have not found any evidence so far. That doesn't mean there's none there. 
but we've not found any evidence so far to suggest that the building collapses were caused by anything other than the two airplanes that flew into them. I definitely like that, and I think it's a way the country should go. Bill, thanks for calling from Cleveland, Ohio, this morning to talk about your political hero for 2013. Jessica's up next from Wentzville, Missouri, on our line for Republicans. Jessica, good morning. Hi, how are you this morning? Good. Good. Um, Well, I had two heroes. I chose Rand Paul because of his emphasis on civil liberties. And for the same reason, I love all the 9-11 conspiracy callers on your show. (laughs) And uh, talk, talk a little bit about uh, an either and uh, and why you're electing them as your hero for 2013. Um, both because of the civil liberties aspect, and I feel like the uh, the 9/11 guys, even though it's an unpopular message, they are drawing attention to how that was kind of a crystal knocked event for our country, so they could remove some of our rights. You know, that's why I am such a strong Republican libertarian slant. All right, Jessica, thanks for calling in this Christmas morning. We're going to be taking your comments uh, in. Uh, much more on that in the uh, days, weeks, and months to come. Uh, but as we said, we're talking about your political hero of 2013. Todd is from Davenport, Iowa, on our line for independence. Todd, good morning. Hey, good morning, yes. And um, I'm surprised you guys were live today. Thank you for being on. I wake up every morning to C-SPAN. I'm an independent newspaper publisher out of Davenport, Iowa. And, uh, Appreciate you heroes- tuning in. Pardon me? Appreciate you tuning in. Go ahead. Absolutely. Well, you know, Bradley Manning, now known as Chelsea Manning, has to be on the list, I think, for 2013. And Thomas Drake, um, the uh, whistleblower from the NSA, um, also should be on the list uh, for 2013. I first became aware of Thomas Drake actually watching C SPAN, your coverage of the National Press Club in June, when he made a, a phenomenal speech, which I encourage everybody to go to your uh, video archives and, and search for Thomas Drake at the National Press Club. It's a very gripping, um, uh, chilling uh, uh, survey of what the situation is. And, um, you know, he, before Snowden, there was Drake, and, and Snowden gets all the headlines, but uh, Drake is one, this one and uh, inspired Snowden, and uh, Drake exposed the NSA's trailblazer program, and he did, you know, as Senator Feinstein has, has implored whistleblowers to go through uh, ch- uh, channels, official channels, he did uh, try to report the misconduct he was he blew the whistle on through official channels, and, um, you know, to no avail. So, uh, I think Thomas Drake should be on the list, and of course, Chelsea Manning, and I'm hopeful that in our lifetime, that uh, Manning will see uh, the light of day and freedom. Um, and one other comment I'd like to make is, and your second caller this this morning, the the, the woman who uh, who broached the topic of the, uh, the the conspiracy theorists who call in, uh, I, I applaud her bringing that up. I know that you, um, many of your uh, folks that host these shows, are sensitive to people calling in about that topic. And I would really encourage your producers to think about having uh, the architects and engineers for truth. Um, on as guests uh, regarding uh, the the facts that they have looked up and so forth, and I think it's a topic that is uh, should be discussed. And uh, I would encourage people to check out the uh, Architects and Engineers for Truth. That is a extremely uh, empirical, uh, cogent, and, and balanced view uh, that you probably won't hear. Todd, thanks for the suggestions this morning. Todd brings up the uh, whistleblowers uh, event. All and you know it, it's a role he continues to play. Rebecca Cinderbrand is our guest, Politico, White House Deputy Editor. Stephen is in Valrico, Florida, Republican line. Go ahead, Stephen. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, I, I just want to have a have a minute, Bruce. Like yours, expect to stay relevant if you don't cover the mountain with evidence proving that Building Seven was brought down with explosives on 9/11, like most Americans are finding out today. Stephen is a 9-11 truther. Thank you, Stephen. Dorothy is Jack. You know, it's, it's, it's the intent of uh, the United States and the Afghan government to sort of be able to, to, keep, to hold those, those, those areas and, and keep them from kind of reverting back to that. Kim is up next from Orlando, Florida, on our line for Republicans. Kim, good morning. You're on with Carlo Munoz. Good morning, Mr. Minos. Thank you for taking my call. Morning. As a reporter and journalist, Mr. Munoz, I'm sure you do your best to report the facts surrounding major events facing our country. 
I would like to ask whether you will report some facts surrounding the events of September 11, 2001, the consequences of which are impacting our country and the world even today. Specifically, will you report the fact that Building 7 was brought down by controlled dem demolition? All right, Kim, we're talking about global hotspots in, in 2014, but uh, Carlo Munoz give you a chance uh, to talk, uh, to answer her question if you'd like. Well, um, as far as the, uh, the issue in terms of the, the controlled dem demolitions or, or explosives, I can't really comment on that. But in terms of the 9-11 the attacks, I mean, you know, we're talking about global hotspots. A lot of these hotspots were sort of spawned, you know, this, in this post-9-11 era. Um, you know, we touched on Afghanistan. Um, we've also, you know, touched on other areas of the world. And I think there's, there's, some, there's some parallels in terms of, of some of the operations that the United States has taken on um, tied to 9-11. So. And, and one of the... So it's, it's not just a, a strictly a partisan issue. There is a kind of an economic component that varies state by state. Our first call for this segment comes from Rich in Galena, Maryland, on our line for Republicans. Yes, good morning. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, my question is, since more people are waking up to the scientific evidence proving that Building 7 was brought down in a controlled demolition on 9-11, and... No right, we're going to stick with the topic of the agenda for Congress in 2014. John is up. Steve, thanks for calling in with your comment this morning. Leroy is waiting in Utica, New York, on our line for Democrats. Uh, Leroy, good morning. You're on with Seth Jones of the RAND Corporation. Good morning. Uh, my question is, how can RAND fulfill its mission of improving national policy and decision-making through research and analysis? As it says on its page, if it doesn't factor basic physics into its analysis, and voice the fact that Building 7's 105 feet of freefall on 9-11 would only be possible if explosives were used to destroy it. Leroy, uh, we're going to hold off on the 9-11 uh, uh, conspiracy theories. We're going to be talking about Iraq here for about the next uh, 20 minutes or so. And we've got several people waiting to talk to Seth Jones. you have a question on that subject? Well, no, I, I have the question I, I asked. I, I asked it, so please don't try to deflect the question by distracting everybody with, with this topic. This is what the basis of our foreign policy now, so I want him to address it. Seth Jones, if, if you want to address it, I'll give you a chance. Well, I, I would just say that uh, that uh, uh, regarding 9-11, I think um, it's very straightforward uh, that the al-Qaeda leadership, uh, bin Laden, before his death, Ayman al-Sawahri, and the leadership has taken credit for it. Um, we've got a commission that has looked into uh, how it was uh, perpetrated. Um, so I, I think right now what we're seeing in a range of areas, though, is this organization is a much more decentralized uh, organization than it was on 9-11, but we've seen elements of it or those find out more let's go to kim next in uh, missouri democratic caller hi kim good morning good morning uh, congressman lee the uh, purpose of your work has never just been to win elections and i know that you use your position to do the right thing since there's so much scientific evidence proving that building seven was brought down with pre-planted explosives on 9-11 and over 2,000 billing experts demanding a new investigation of its destruction. In the interest of transparency, why shouldn't we have a new investigation into the cause of why this third tower fell when no plane hit it? Well, let me uh, just say, you know, we have to once again um, remember and think of those who were lost during that uh, tragic, horrific um, event. and recognize that many, many, many investigations um, have occurred as a result of that, some conclusive, some inconclusive, and um, evidence is still coming out. But I'm not certain that uh, a new investigation uh, will lead anywhere, but there are those who really are pushing for that. And so in a democracy, we have to, you know, continue to, um, you know, put our points of views out and continue to ask for what you believe is, is right. But there have been many investigations that many people feel uh, were accurate and provided the most in-depth in uh, conclusion. Sandy Beach tweets in, Representative... They were there who were gathering just to try to break through that impasse. We'll go to William in Glenview, Illinois, Republican caller. Yes, the refusal of Congress to acknowledge a certain reality is rapidly diluting the trust Americans once had in their government. For this reason, in the interest of common sense and reestablishing Americans' trust, 
would you be willing to personally review the scientific evidence proving that the third tower that fell on 9-11, Building 7, was brought down with explosives, and to meet with representatives of the 2,000 architects and engineers who are demanding a new investigation into why it fell when it was not hit by an airplane? William is in Glenview, Illinois. He's our second call this morning from a group out there uh, that doesn't believe, it's skeptical of the uh, government's investigation into what really happened on September 11th, 2001, organized enough to call into our show and others. Congressman, do you care to respond? Yeah, I mean, it's it's my understanding there's been a thorough investigation there, and that matter is, is uh, essentially understood and resolved. I'm obviously open to hearing information, and if someone contacts my office, we'll certainly look at it. David Conway, Matt uh, so I think that, uh, you know, building a strong, prosperous America, uh, nation building at home, uh, is going to demonstrate to the rest of the world that we have a functioning pluralistic society with a rule of law, a separation of powers, a respect for minority rights. And this is what M Mawasha uh, writes in his, his new book, The Second Arab Awakening. Let's go to our phone calls. Mary's been waiting to talk to you in Fort Myers, Florida, Democratic caller. Hi, Mary. Hello there. Morning. I really agree with the congressman. Oh, yes. I have a question, though. I know you're not a building expert, but you are a U.S. rep who sits on the Homeland Security Committee, so you are responsible to the American people to respond seriously to the opinions of over 2,000 building experts. We're talking national building. security here. There is a very strong evidence for proving that 9-11 Building 7 was brought down by controlled demolition. People are waking up to it. Would you be willing to personally review that evidence with representatives of those building experts uh, and let me, let me just give you some context. Mary, Mary is part of uh, a group out there that is skeptical of the investigation that was done of the September 11th, 2001 attacks. Uh, the 9-11 Commission? Yes, okay. the 9-11 Commission. Sure. Um, skeptical of, of their investigation. Okay. Well, uh, certainly, you know, uh, we have a responsibility, I have a responsibility to review all relevant information relative to uh, that situation and generally. So, uh, most certainly, uh, any information that is uh, compelling, uh, that changes the dynamic of the debate relative to cause and effect, uh, I would certainly review, yes. We'll go on to Rick in Bannon. Again, open phones until 10 o'clock. Here is Tony. Blackwood, New Jersey, Democrats line, hello. Yeah, uh, Pedro, uh, I was uh, trying to call and get a hold of uh, Ray Tagici, and you mentioned that uh, you would let us talk about things that we're talking about today. Uh, and anyway, I wanted to talk about uh, this national security thing with the FBI. Um, you know, you probably know there was a third large tower, Building 7, that com collapsed completely to the ground on 9-11, even though it wasn't hit by a plane. This building came down symmetrically across its full length and width, the full free-fall acceleration for the first 100 feet of its collapse. So the collapse of this building clearly had to be due to controlled demolition. And then this report said it was fire, but that has now been found to have omitted features which would make their hypothesis impossible. That means that this report's a fraud. So I was wondering why the FBI isn't listening to the over 2,000 architects and engineers. There's actually to over 2,100. I'm an engineer myself, and we're demand we would like a new investigation into Building 7's destruction on 9/11. John, sequestration, you know, particularly on defense. All right, let's get to phone calls. Jeff's yeah. waiting in Kingsport, Tennessee. Democratic caller. Hi, Jeff. Hi, how you doing? Morning. Uh, good. There's a overwhelming scientific evidence proving that the third tower that fell on 9-11, which wasn't hit by a plane, Building 7, was brought down in a controlled demolition. Since the rights of Americans are being affected by this NSA program, which is based on 9-11, we want to make sure we know everything about the event. Would you be willing to personally review the Building 7 controlled demolition evidence with representatives of the over 2,000 building experts who are demanding a new investigation of its destruction? Okay, Jeff. Yeah. Senator, uh, there's a, a group yeah. of folks out there that don't believe that yeah. the investigation was yeah. adequate. Yeah. Uh, the answer is no. I think it's pretty conclusive that it was done by terrorists and it was airplanes did it. I've had people come to my town meetings in Iowa as early as uh, 2003 and 2004 and discuss this with me. They brought great big pictures in of the towers going down and, the, and somebody who honestly believed this but pointed to it and said, you know, this is a fake. This is not aviation gas that's blowing up here or that's 
uh, steaming up here is fire, et cetera, et cetera. I think it's been pretty well investigated. All right. Yeah. Bill, Myrtle Beach. Which puts us at a real economic disadvantage. Let's get to calls. Kathy's waiting in Kingsport, Tennessee, Democratic caller. Hi, Kathy. Hi. Morning. I, just, I wanted to ask, the well-known attorney, Dr. William Pepper, has sent a letter to the Department of Commerce pointing out that the NIST's report on the destruction of Building 7 on 9-11 omitted important features of the building design, which have included would have made the fire collapse hypothesis impossible, since understanding why Building 7 really fell is crucially important to better understanding 9-11 and our current situation. Would you be willing to review that letter and assist in getting the DOC to address the issues raised in it? You know, I'd be happy to review the letter. I have to say I'm not familiar with that correspondence uh, or uh, essentially what theory that that correspondence puts forward. Uh, if, the, uh, if the theory is that those planes did not bring that building down, uh, that something else did, I can't imagine what else that might have been. Uh, now, it's, I suppose, certainly possible that there were construction defects uh, in the building you're referring to. Uh, and I'd be more than willing to look at the letter, but I would be quite astounded if... Uh, if the collapse of that building was unrelated to the, the plane crash. Brian, Dallas, Texas. Sustainably. Chris is next. Trenton, North Carolina. Democratic caller. Uh, good morning. Uh, first off, uh, just let me say that uh, although I li currently live in North Carolina, I'm originally from Northeast, uh, Northeast Ohio, Kent, oh. Ohio. Uh, oh. I'm a retire retired Army senior NCO with over 20 years. 23 years of service. <clears throat> um, and before I ask my question, I just wanted to say that uh, I'm glad to hear that you do not support the TPP. That would, I think that would be devastating to our country. Um, okay, anyway, regarding uh, appropriations, spending, and waste, my question is this. Congress's refusal to investigate the evidence that Building 7 was brought down in a controlled demolition on 9-11 is based on its blind trust in this WTC-7 report, which has now been found to contain incorrect data about the building design that, when corrected, renders this fire collapse uh, conclusion impossible. Now, uh, would, as Appropriations Committee member, would you be willing to review the errors in this report and help in seeking accountability from NIST for this error, these errors, considering that NIST has spent over $20 million of taxpayers' money to produce this erroneous report? Uh, thank you. Thank you uh, very much. I would be more than happy to receive information from you, sir, and turn it over to those who have that particular agency under their jurisdiction. I have seen some of the uh, callers who have called into programs, and I think you're getting your message through. And as I said earlier, truth will out. Uh, sometimes the government uh, doesn't have all the facts or there is an effort uh, in some matters to not reveal the facts for whatever reason. Uh, but ultimately, if the American people are persistent, the truth will be revealed. So uh, you certainly can send me material, and I will discuss it with those who are in charge of uh, funding those agencies. Nancy's next in Florida. Republican caller, our last for Congresswoman Kaptur. Exactly. Set the facts out straight. Thank you. Austin, Texas. Oscar, Republican caller. Hi, Oscar. Good morning. Uh, talking about investigations that we need, what yeah. rationale basis do people in Congress have for ignoring the over 2,000 building experts demanding a new investigation of Building 7 destruction on 9-11 and the evidence that pre-planned explosives destroyed it? Besides politics and personal discomfort with the implications of the evidence, what's the rationale for ignoring Building 7 being destroyed on 9-11. Okay, Congressman, we have a, a, a group of people out there who are organized, call into the show and other shows, that believe that the investigation that the government did into the September 11th, 2001 attacks was, uh, is inadequate. Yeah, so I saw um, the Congresswoman who's sitting here before, Marcy Kaptur, I think maybe the same caller called in, and she said... Um, different caller. Different caller? Okay, you can get the voice. She said that... Um, she would refer that information over to the appropriate authorities. So I would encourage this caller and all the people um, that call the show, apparently, to give a call over to Marcy's office, and she will forward that information over to the appropriate place. We'll go to... Bitter. 
But I think now that President Rouhani has taken office, a lot of that has sort of faded into the background. Uh, and he is no longer, I would say, at least from, from my perspective here, uh, a big story in Iran at this stage. Let's go to Blair from Scottsdale, Arizona, Democrats line with Michael Singh of the Washington Institute for Near East Policy. Go ahead, Blair. Thank you. I'd like to ask Mr. Singh if he and members of the Washington Institute for Near East Policy ever watch or consume a press TV out of Iran. Um, and if they do, how they answer Iranians, uh, journalists and investigators' uh, skepticism promotes, uh, for example, who the use of uh, weapons of mass destruction in Syria, or even more importantly, the very veracity and authenticity of the 9-11 attack itself, most especially when coupled with our own U.S. investigators' conclusions about Building 7, World Trade Center 7, falling straight down at free fall. This is brought up repeatedly at Press TV, and I'm wondering just how uh, think tanks in Washington uh, handle these uh, skepticisms. Thank you. Well, I, I think that this sort of 9-11 trutherism that we're hearing is absolute folly. I, I think that's just absolute nonsense. Uh, and to the extent to I or my colleagues, not just at my institute, but I think across Washington, hear that, um, we press back on that very strongly because it's it's nonsense. Uh, I think the story of 9-11 is very well established uh, and has been well established, and there's uh, there's just absolute nonsense to, to sort of go into that. Um, look, you do hear skepticism around the world about, uh, you know, what's happening in Iran, you know, what's happening in the Middle East. Um, again, what, what I think is, is best to do is to sort of start with the facts and, and go from there, and that's, uh, that's what we always try to do. From New York City, John. So I don't know if uh, they're they're going to probably just try to make him look bad no matter what. So that's my opinion. Okay. All right, Don. Michael in uh, Miamisburg, Ohio, Republican caller. Michael, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I'd just like to have two things to say. The first thing about the NSA, uh, I heard a lot of people on, the, on your call-ins and that saying, well, they can listen to me all they want because I'm not doing nothing. Well, what about the NSA? Uh, why are they so uh, covering everything up if they haven't done anything wrong? And another thing I'd like to say is about the uh, building number seven at the Trade Center. Uh, there's so many people calling in about this. Why don't you just have a, the discussion on C-SPAN and let it be dropped to end, you know? Okay. All right, Michael. Got your point. James, Akron, Ohio. Citizen hold a lobbying day on Capitol Hill today. Let's get to phone calls. Manchester, Connecticut, independent caller. Alec, you're up first. Go ahead. Uh, good morning. How are you guys doing? I love the show. Melanie, how are you? Nice to see you. Um, I, I'd just like to know, um, well, researchers have recently discovered through Freedom of Information Act requests that NIST omitted important elements of Building 7's design, the third tower that fell on 9-11, which wasn't hit by a plane, and that if NIST had properly included these elements in their data, their explanation for Building 7's fall would have been impossible. Now that attorney Dr. William Pepper has written to the Department of Commerce demanding accountability from NIST over this, would you be willing to read his letter and consider having your organization review this issue? Uh, well, you can please feel free to, to send us the letter at info at citizensforethics.org, and we'll certainly take a look. Is that something um, that you guys look into, or is it mostly money in politics? We do mostly money in politics and congressional ethics issues, but we also use the Freedom of Information Act a significant amount to obtain information from the government that it might not want to share. Tom in Fontana. We're talking with David Shepardson. He's the Washington Bureau Chief of Detroit News. If you have questions for him as we talk about the state of the U.S. auto industry, give us a ring. Our phone lines are open. Democrats can call in at 202-585-3880. Republicans, 202-585-3881. Independents, 202-585-3882. And if you're outside the U.S., it's 202 202- 585-3883. We'll also look for your uh, tweets and emails as well. But John is waiting on our line for Republicans this morning. John is in Silver Spring, Maryland. John, good morning. Hi. Um, since Detroit has a large Muslim population, which has been affected by the post-9-11 world, serving your readers as part of your paper's D.C. Bureau means covering all aspects of that event. Uh, there's scientific evidence proving that the uh, third tower, Building 7, 
which wasn't hit by a plane, was brought down with uh, pre-planted explosives. Hey, John, we're, we're, we'll hold off on, on the 9-11 calls right now. We're going to stick to the, the auto industry. Do you have a question uh, for Mr. Shepardson on that? Why are you afraid to talk about Building 7? John, not afraid to talk about it, but want to stick with this subject since we have a guest here who's a, an expert on it. We'll go to Ray and Killers were apprehended, but nonetheless, the FBI had to engage in some questionable conduct to get to that point. Gregory Wall Lance is our guest, former assistant U.S. attorney for New York, 1979 to 1985. We're talking about the ABScam investigation, <clears throat> pardon me, of the late 70s and early 80s. It's tie-in to the American Hustle movie. We're going to put the numbers up on the screen if you'd like to dial in, if you have any questions about this, go ahead and dial in now, or you can tweet it as well. Peter is calling from Nichols, New York. Peter, good morning. Yes, hello, good morning. Uh, Mr. Wallen, you're a lawyer who's helped prosecute government <clears throat> officials. Uh, <clears throat> well, there's evidence suggesting that Building 7, that's the third tower that fell on 9-11, which wasn't hit by a plane, was brought down and controlled okay, by We're going to cut him off because he's not talking on the topic that we are talking on this morning. Sorry about that, Mr. Wallens. Steve and Cole. Uh, Mr. Wicken, while folks are calling in, uh, tell us about the Center for Public Integrity. What is uh, your group and uh, how is it funded? The Center for Public Integrity has been around since 1989. We're a nonprofit group based in Washington, D.C. that focuses on investigative journalism. We're funded by around 40-some foundations and hundreds of individuals, uh, and all the uh, donors are listed uh, on our main website, which is www.publicintegrity.org. The center has traditionally looked hard uh, at the way money, power, and special interest influence um, corrupts the governing process. We do a lot on money in politics, housing, health care policy, education, uh, energy and environment, and uh, state government and juvenile justice as well. Let's get to the calls. Laura's waiting in Norwood, New York, on our line for Democrats. Laura, good morning. You're on with Gordon Witkin. He's the managing editor at the Center for Public Integrity. Good morning, Mr. Witkins. Um, it's now clear that the corporate media's purpose is to handle the public and not help it, as demonstrated by the media's effort to stifle discussion of evidence proving that the third tower to fall on 9-11 World Trade Center 7, which wasn't hit by a plane, had to have hey, been brought Laura, we're gonna we're going to move on. We're talking about... Uh, the State Integrity Investigation Project, and we're going to keep to that subject this morning. Let's go to Richard. ...can benefit from the greatness of America. Tempe, Arizona, Democrats lying. This is Steve. Hello. Hello, Senator Sanders. Uh, being the longest-serving independent member of Congress in American history is a great accomplishment, and uh, I think it's because you're one of the few in Congress willing to talk about issues that constantly get ignored by mainstream media. So um, I have two related questions. My first question to you, sir, is would you personally be willing to independently review a letter written to the Department of Commerce by Dr. William Pepper? This letter states that the 2008 report by NIST on the destruction of Building 7 on 9-11 omitted critical data, which would have made their collapse due to fire explanation impossible. No, I won't. Uh, I do not believe that 9-11 was a conspiracy. Uh, I believe that al-Qaeda and bin Laden uh, caused 9-11. Uh, so that's my view. Indianapolis, Indiana. I think that you hear from so many of the callers. William in Simsbury, Connecticut, Democratic caller. You're next for Congressman Tom Price. Go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Representative. Hey, uh, many people... Many people are demanding a new investigation into why Building 7 fell on September 11th when it wasn't hit by a plane. Now it's been uh, clearly identified that NIST omitted important data about the building when it did its WTC7 report that uh, invalidates its fire-only collapse explanation. Despite misconceptions by some public officials, uh, questions like this are not aimed at placing blame, but simply pointing out that the scientific evidence is that there is more to the 9-11 crime than we all thought. Congressman? 
Yeah, I think that, that uh, the studies that were done afterward and the, uh, the investigation that was done and, and the, the real life experience uh, of, of individuals who were there and saw what happened and, and, and tragically uh, the, the events that occurred, um, I, I think it corroborates uh, what, the, what the general wisdom is about this. Look, this is a very dangerous world. Uh, and, and the fact of the matter is that, that individuals who sought the destruction of the United States flew planes into the World Trade Center towers on September 11, 2001 and into the Pentagon and had another plane aimed at either the White House or, or, the, or the United States Capitol. That's not a myth. That's real. Uh, and, and if we are not honest with ourselves, again, about making the diagnosis that this is a dangerous world and there are people who seek to do us harm, then we will absolutely uh, abrogate our responsibility in a reckless manner for keeping the nation safe. Congressman Tom Price, we will end. Some background on the TSA it was formed, of course, in the wake of the 9-11 terrorist attacks as the federal government consolidated the security operations at airports and terminals around the country. There are currently about 50,000 TSA officers. They screen, on average, 1.8 million passengers every day. They also deploy thousands of behavior detection officers at airports. There are about 400 or more TSA explosive specialists and thousands of air marshals on daily flights. The average salary for a TSA administrator, a TSA uh, officer, is between $28,000 and $45,000 a year. Next is Troy joining us from Houston. Good morning, Republican line. Good morning. Yeah, it's anybody who has half a brain can see that our Fourth Amendment rights are being clearly violated by the TSA. The people in TSA are generally good people and they're just trying to do their job, but their screening has got to go away. It's not doing anything. The war on terror is a joke. Everyone knows that Building 7 wasn't even hit by a plane and it fell down. So, the only good point about what TSA is doing is that Rand Paul will win in 2016 because everyone hates the police state. This is a Next from uh, Woodbridge, Virginia. Nelson